The use of health data for research in the United Kingdom is subject to strict rules, regulations and policies. This means that before you can start a research project, there are various approval processes that you have to go through to make sure that your project is above board. Broadly speaking, there are two kinds of approvals. Approvals from data providers, in other words, permission to get access to the data, and approvals from governance bodies. These are organisations that check that the research complies with the relevant laws and policies. It can take some time to get the necessary approvals for your research and even more time to get access to the data. So you should be realistic about how long these processes might take when you're planning your research. Most of the approval bodies publish stats on their websites that show you how quickly they review applications. If you're lucky, you might be part of a project or an infrastructure that already has approvals in place, or at least some of the approvals in place. However, all research requires at least one approval. It's UK policy that all health research needs approval from the organisation that is carrying out the research, whether that's a university, a company or a research organisation. This is called sponsorship. The sponsor is likely to be the organisation that employs you. Sponsorship means that the organisation takes on responsibility for planning, starting, managing and arranging the finance for the research. The sponsor will also organise insurance and will also be a data controller for the data that's used in the project. Sponsorship processes vary between organisations. You should contact your research governance office for their advice. Arranging sponsorship should be the first thing you do, as all the other approval processes will need to see the evidence of sponsorship before you can accept an application. All health research also requires some kind of research ethics approval. Generally speaking, if the research team will have access to identifiable NHS data, then an NHS research ethics committee needs to review the project. If the research team won't have access to identifiable NHS data, for example, the data is accessed in a trusted research environment, then a non-NHS research ethics committee, such as a university committee, should review the research. That's a very general explanation, and there are lots of nuances and exceptions, especially in the different UK countries. You should get advice from your sponsor or look at the Health Research Authority's website, where there's a useful tool that advises you about the need for NHS research ethics approval. The Health Research Authority, along with the devolved administrations, run an approval process for any research that uses NHS resource. This is essentially a check on the governance and legal compliance of the research. Exactly what constitutes NHS resource is open to interpretation, and again, you should contact your sponsor for their advice. You can apply for your NHS approvals through a single online system, the Integrated Research Application System. You can also use this system to apply for approval from the Confidentiality Advisory Group. You need their approval if your research, at any stage, involves accessing confidential patient information without consent in England and Wales. Again, it can be difficult to work out if this applies to your project or not, and the Confidentiality Advisory Group website has lots of useful advice. In Scotland, accessing confidential patient information without consent for research needs approval from the relevant bodies. This is a Caldicott Guardian for information from One Health Board and the Health and Social Care Public Benefit and Privacy Panel for information from more than One Health Board. In Northern Ireland, a good place to start is the Honest Broker Service. That covers research approvals. What about the data providers? Currently, all data providers operate their own approvals and data provision service, so you'll need to look at each data provider's website for details of how to get their approval. However, these are being brought together as part of the HDR UK Innovation Gateway, which will form a single entry point for accessing health data. The Innovation Gateway also has extensive metadata, so it's easy to work out which data providers you need to get approval from. But it can still be tricky to work out what other research approvals you might need and what approvals you don't need. Projects that look very similar in nature may require different approvals, and some projects may require new approvals as the research evolves. A good way to work this out is to put together a data flow diagram. This will make it clear to you and the people that are reviewing your research about what data is involved, who sees identifiable or confidential information, and therefore what approvals are needed for your research. And good luck with your applications.